Hallo, hallo, hallo. I'm going to discuss with you the solutions of problem 91. And the questions were the following. When you look at the sky, the blue sky, are there areas in the sky where the light that you see is polarized, strongly polarized, or maybe even very strongly polarized. The first question is, why is that? The second question is, where in the sky is that? And then the third question is, in what direction is the direction of the oscillating E field? the electromagnetic waves, because that's what we specify as the direction of polarization. Okay, you ready? You will find most, if not all, information that you need in lecture number 14 of 803. I derived there what is known as the famous Larmor formulae. The lecture lasts 85 minutes, but it I cover that after about 53 minutes <coughs> into the lecture. The basic idea is that we have oscillating charges, they being accelerated, and because of the acceleration of the charges, they emit electromagnetic radiation. That was worked out first by Larmor. If the charges oscillate in this direction, then anywhere in the plane perpendicular to the direction in which they are being accelerated, so in this plane, the electromagnetic waves are 100% linearly polarized. In other words, the angle between the oscillating charge and the direction of the EM radiation is then 90 degrees. If you change the angle to an angle theta instead of 90 degrees, then we have to multiply the E vector by the sine of theta. So yes, there's still a certain degree of linear polarization, but nowhere nearly as strong. The sine of theta is 90 degrees, and that's why it's a maximum here. And the sine of zero degrees means that in this direction, there is not even any electric field. But if the angle were theta, then you can use the Lamar equations and calculate what the strength of the E vector will be and the direction. Now, this has relevance to the light from the sun that scatters into our atmosphere. Most of that scattering, it depends on the weather conditions, is Rayleigh scattering. And the probability that light is reflected in Rayleigh scattering is inversely proportional to the wavelengths of the light to the power 4. So blue light has a much higher probability to be scattered than red light. That's why the sky is blue, but that's a separate issue. So the sky is blue. And now you can use the concept of the Larmor idea that sunlight will interact with the air and the E vectors will shake the E vectors from the solar electromagnetic radiation, will shake these charges because air has charges. 
It's not an ideal single charge. Therefore, you will not expect that 90 degrees away from the direction of the sun, the sky will be 100% polarized because air molecules are, are not single charges. In addition, there can be dust in the atmosphere. The dust particles could be larger than a micron or so, in which case there is no Rayleigh scattering for those particles. And in that case, there is no polarization either. But if the particles were all smaller than one tenth of a micron, Rayleigh scattering would surely be, certainly be dominating. So, if you do look in the direction 90 degrees away from the sun, then yes, if you have your linear polarizer on you, you hold it up to the sky, roughly 90 degrees away from the sun, which of course, depending upon where the sun is, it's a great circle in the sky. Part of that circle could be below the horizon, of course, that's a separate issue. So if you look with your linear polarizer, 90 degrees away from the sun, and there are many points, if the sun is right there, there would be a whole circle here, then I can rotate my linear polarizer and practically kill that light. You will actually, the light will be dark, even though it may only be 80% linearly polarized, it really looks very dark. So let's now look at the picture that tells the whole story. This is for you, your universe. This is infinitely far away from you. It's the sky. And you are right here at the middle. And your horizontal plane is this. So you're standing here and sunlight comes, sunlight comes in in this direction. This plane that I have drawn is a great circle which is perpendicular to the sunlight. So when you stand here, whenever you look in any of those directions of this great circle, you will have then the situation that it's strongly linearly polarized. So you standing here, you may be looking in this direction, you may be looking in that direction or in that direction, you may be looking in that direction or you may be looking in that direction or you may be looking in this direction, or in this direction, or in that direction. In all cases, you would be looking 90 degrees away from the sun. The direction of the E-field, and that of course follows immediately from the Larmor formulas, is perpendicular to the direction from where the light comes from, the plane through the direction where the light comes from, and your line of sight. We call that the position vector. In other words, in this case, suppose you looked in this direction. So that is your line of sight. And this is the direction of sunlight. And of course this angle here is 90 degrees, because that's the idea of this great circle. So then, the electric field is in that direction perpendicular to the sunlight and perpendicular to your line of sight. And that means it's coming in and out of the blackboard, and therefore it's tangential to the circle. You can do the same reasoning if you were here and you look in this direction, then this sunlight scatters in your direction over an angle of 90 degrees. You can then also easily argue 
that the direction of polarization will be in this direction. In other words, tangential to the circle. And also here, as I just showed you, tangential to that circle. So that answers all the three questions. So you know now why it can be polarized, in which direction to look, and you even know the direction of polarization. In that lecture, at the very end, I do a demonstration which is a classic. I call it the sunset demonstration. And it kills three birds with one stone. I have a jar, glass jar, square, and in that glass is thiosulfate, which is transparent. And I put some sodium H2SO4 in there, sodium sulfate, and then sodium will precipitate. Teeny weeny little particles will slowly participate more and more and more in time. If here is this bucket and the light comes in in this direction, the students are then in my classroom in that direction. And so they will look at that liquid and see it gradually getting bluer and bluer and bluer. That's the Rayleigh scattering, that's the one overlap that to the fourth. Because the light that I shine in is a discharge from a light that is very close to white light. Since the students who are in this direction are at 90 degree angle to the incoming light, they should see the light closely to 100% polarized. And I demonstrate that. They have their own linear polarizers anyhow, but I have a large sheet of polarimeter and I hold that in, flon in front of the glass jar and I rotate it and they can see that it is linearly polarized in the direction perpendicular to where the sunlight comes from and their direction perpendicular to this and this is in this direction. So the E field is polarized in this direction and I show that in a very dramatic way. Now if students are sitting not at 90 degree angles but only at 30 degree angles then Yes, it's still partially polarized, but much, much less. Okay? The demo is stunning. Not only do I show that the sky becomes blue, and that it is polarized and strongly polarized in the direction 90 degrees for the students who have the best places in the lecture hall, but that light that goes through this rectangular jar I project on the wall and the more particles grow into that jar the more blue light is thrown out and green light and yellow light and the only light that can make it through is red light which has the longest wavelength and so the probability of scattering is the lowest because of one overlap that to the fourth. And so the light that goes through, which I project on the wall, will gradually get redder and redder and redder and redder and redder. It's very, very dramatic, and that's why I call it sunsets. In other words, the fact that more that the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker and thicker is equivalent, of course to in the real world that the sun gets closer and closer and closer to the horizon because the closer it is to the horizon the more light there is in between the sun and us. Alright, watch that fantastic demo. 803, lecture number 14. I also do that demo 
In my farewell lecture, which is my most popular lecture, has been viewed by more than 11 million people, it's called For the Love of Physics. It is my farewell lecture at MIT and I gave it on May 16 in 2011. You will see it on my YouTube channel. I do the same demo there, but I don't explain it, of course, as thoroughly as I do in lecture 14 of 803. All right, catch your linear polarizers and look at the blue sky and depending upon sky conditions, if there are not too many pollens in the sky, it's really clear blue sky, look at 90 degrees away from the sun and you will see dramatic effect. Very, very strongly polarized. Under ideal condition, I believe it's around uh, 80% polarized. All right, have a nice day, take care, and of course, we will be friends. That's always a given. And when you have the pleasure of looking your own linear polarizer and looking at the sky, you will always remember me. Not only as a friend, but also as a teacher.